What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. It's going to be a wonderful day here on the homestead because we're going to start our fall planting this afternoon. This little plot here behind me, we're going to be filling it full of broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, who knows what else. Now, ideally, I would like to be early October, first week of October, getting this stuff in the ground. Here we are, the second week of October. So we're not too far behind. Things have finally cooled off enough where I feel comfortable putting stuff in the ground. A few years ago, I got bit pretty bad because we had a really late summer and I tried to rush getting some of this stuff in the ground in late September and it was just too hot and I lost a lot of plants and I was having to overhead water a lot to keep them alive. So the temperature seems like it's finally broke for good. It's getting pretty cool at night or relatively cool for here, you know, down in the low 60, 63, 64, something like that. So we should have a pretty good survival rate on our transplants with that. Now on the last video where we did a little garden tour, I didn't spend a lot of time on these four plots where we have compost. So the first thing I'm gonna do is walk around, show you these four plots, kind of talk about our plans for these four plots, why we put X amount of compost on each plot and uh, what we're gonna do with each plot going forward. So if you've been keeping up, we got a whopping big load of 25 tons of compost delivered here. We had a big pile there and a big pile here. Now, my plan with getting that much compost was to turn a few more, at least one more, we'll see, maybe two of these plots into no-till plots. So that's a no-till plot right there. And that's the one that's going to be planted last amongst these four that have compost. So that's why that one kind of looks like a mess and I'm not really worried about it right now. For this plot here, most of the compost that was dumped on here, we got it spread out as evenly as we could. There may be a few little humps in there, but um, it, it's good enough. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. It'll settle out once it gets some rain or some overhead water on it. Some spots it's a little more compacted than others from where the tractor was there, kind of spreading the stuff around. But anyway, this is what we're going to convert into another no-till plot. So I, I'm guessing there's about five or six inches of compost on that plot there. There's a good bit of pea debris underneath it. We just covered that up. But I think we got about five or six inches on here, which is a, a really good start for converting this to a no-till plot. Now I like what I've been seeing in that first no-till plot we have, the one we converted, I think it was around last year at this time. But I'm not ready to go all in and convert all 10 of my plots no-till for several different reasons I'm not completely bought in yet it does have its challenges it's not the easiest thing to convert to and it takes a lot of compost so we're gonna add one at least this one maybe another plot to our no-till repertoire and we'll just see how it goes we may eventually some time down the road end up having all 10 of them no-till but I doubt that we might just go for an even split, five and five, something like that. And like I told you earlier, in this no-till plot that we've had for a year or so, we're gonna be planting this last amongst these four because this is where our onions are going and we still got several weeks before they'll be ready and before we wanna get those in the ground. So we'll eventually spread all this out here. We don't have to put as much compost on this because it's already got a pretty thick layer on it. But uh, we'll get that evened out and spread around by the time we need to plant some onions. Now this one over here is the one I'm thinking I may go no-till with it as well. So this is where we had that really tall cover crop of sorghum sedan grass and red ripper peas. You can see all that debris down there. Kind of looks like a hay field. A few little sprigs there are trying to come back, but the mower and the chickens were able to terminate it pretty good. And I got Brooklyn's uncle to put nine bucket loads on this plot right here. Got them as evenly dispersed there as we could. And I think by the time I rake all this out, it should give me a good three or four inches or so maybe of compost on this plot. So if I can get a good coverage on this plot, we'll uh, make this one no-till. We might have to steal a little compost from that pile because we got plenty there. Well, that's my plan here where this uh, garlic and kale and collards are going is to try to make this one no-till as well just because we got all that good organic matter right there i think it'll work out nice covering that with all the compost and then right behind that one this guy here 
I'm not going no-till with this one. That's why it's only got six bucket loads on it. This is where all our carrots and stuff, carrots, beets, a lot of root crops are going. And I like some really nice fluffy soil for that. So I'm going to even out this compost and till this up for planting those carrots. Not sure in what order I'll do all this if I'll do this one first or this one first. But it'll all happen within a week or two. So now let's go to the greenhouse and see what we've got in there to put in this plot right here today. See how that stuff is doing. I suffered a decent amount of damage in there from pests that week I was gone. Not really sure what happened, but uh, we lost some stuff, but we've still got plenty of stuff that looks pretty good. I think we still have plenty of plants to work with. So let's walk inside here. We can see, look at there, a few of those gourds finally decided to sprout way too late, but there they are so the damage i suffered some people were asking on the last video where we talked about this if it had to do with the orientation of the trays in here and i've moved these things around a little bit so i don't think that was it it's been more kind of crop specific it wasn't even tray specific if it was tray specific i could attribute it to the trays need to be clean or sterilized or something but it's been more crop specific so like this amazing cauliflower here it just got completely decimated um see what else here this jacaranda broccoli almost completely gone that green magic broccoli which is usually a good one for me doesn't look that hot brussels sprouts over there hanging in there pretty good all the kale and collards there look pretty good most of my cabbage here looks pretty good a little bit eaten up not too bad some of the rutabagas this uh american purple top looks okay but this hybrid variety this helenor doesn't look that great our lettuce looks wonderful this stuff has grown super fast i'm gonna have to get it in the ground within the next week or so so it's just been weird what whatever pests we're having in here the the things that it's targeting and the things that it's not targeting you can see down there look at that little volunteer plant that popped up they did some damage on that guy so I, I sprayed this yesterday with some spinosad, hope, hoping to kind of relieve this pest pressure a little bit. We don't really ever have anything that eats our lettuce, so I don't expect a whole lot of damage on there, but some of this other stuff is just taking a hit. So it's going to be good to get it outside, get it in the ground, and maybe we can kind of revive it a little bit and uh, get it back looking good with a little fertilizer, a little water, maybe a little more spraying. So the stuff we're going to be getting in today would be this whole tray here, rutabagas, red cabbage, green cabbage, kale and collards, they're going to stay here for another few days. And then what we can of this broccoli and cauliflower here, we'll probably just have to do, you know, I was looking to do a whole row of broccoli and a whole row of cauliflower, but it looks like I'm going to be struggling to get one row just of broccoli and cauliflower. Um, then we'll do a whole row of Brussels sprouts, looks like we got enough for that. And then this um, Chinese cabbage here was getting eaten on a little bit. We'll put that in there as well as the Savoy cabbage over there. So that should be enough to fill this plot up. Now normally I would put all this stuff on drip irrigation. But there's a few reasons I'm not going to do that for this specific plot. We'll probably use drip on all the other three. But for this one, there's a good bit of pea debris down there underneath that compost. And if I dig too deep a furrow to bury that drip tape, it'll kind of bring all that up and stir it around. I don't want to do that. I want to have everything kind of smothered out. Another reason is time. It's starting to get dark around here about 7.30. And that's going to push me back at least another 30, 45 minutes if I lay the drip tape. And I want to have time for the kids to come out here and um, enjoy this planting with us. The kids are another thing. It's a lot easier to plant with the kids if we're not using drip tape. For using drip tape, we really have to look at where the emitters are, sometimes dig around for them, and sometimes kids don't have the patience for all that. So we're gonna do some kid-friendly planting here. So last year, I learned on that first no-till plot that the compost itself will not provide enough nutrients to these plants. So we definitely need to amend the furrow like we do pretty much everywhere else in the garden and we're definitely going to have to give it some fertilizer through the overhead sprinkler since we won't have drip there i'll probably run a good bit of that agar thrive through the overhead sprinkler to help feed those plants now since i'm not laying drip how am i going to figure out where to put my rows and stuff well, i'm going to use this guy right here this little hoss row maker tool 
and this thing's pretty nifty. It's got variable spacing for the spades there, but I've got them set as far apart as they can go. And uh, this gives me a three foot spacing, which is usually what I like to plant all this kind of stuff on. Now I'm not gonna run a string or anything, but if I can get the first row straight, I can get all the rest of them straight because I can put this one, I can kind of overlap it um, when I'm going through there. So I'm gonna drag this along there. We're gonna see how many rows we can get in this plot, maybe 10 or so. And um, we'll make some little furrows, amend them, and then I'll go get my help. We'll start planting. I don't wanna come on too strong, yeah. I'm always worried I'll stay too long, but what's on your mind tonight? I love it when we can laugh together. That kind of thing, it just makes me feel better. I'm gonna give this just one try. So those rows aren't perfectly straight, but it'll work. It'll work. They are all equidistant. They are all three feet apart. But um, got a little squirrely at some point. It's down here. This row, this last row, isn't really square with that edge of the plot, but it'll be all right. So we got 10 or so rows in there, plenty to work with. I might not use that row that's closest to the end there just to give me some extra room. Brooklyn's in the barn right now getting some of that Harmony 543 that we're going to put in these furrows here. Now, I got some more of the Nature Safe 855 ordered, and I like using that stuff, but I uh, don't have any of it, and I need to use the rest of this bag of the Harmony. So we're going to use that up, and then hopefully in the next few days, we should have more of that Nature Safe in, and we can go back to using that. Wait, not so much. And then I do. Okay, turn. We're gonna put these a little further. Mom, those little plants have been in there since they were seen. Look, baby. You gonna put it right there? Oh. Just like that. And now I want you to measure this far. Okay, with this little stick. And then put oh, it. I know. I know. And then put another one right there. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Kid. You got it. So right there, yeah. Make a little hole. Got to be gentle with it. And now, Ma, and now, Ma. It's good. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Put it in there and put some dirt around it. Here you go, little plant. Here you go, little plant. There you go. It's now my turn. Okay. That is the, put one right there. Put, leave, the, leave the stick. All right, cover it up. There you go, little plant. There you go, little plant. What if I told you you took my breath away? And what if I told you I wish that I could stay? Is it a mistake when my heart breaks? Or will you love when I say? What if I told you you took my breath away? You almost done? I think so. Bubby, how's the little stick trick working? Good. Measuring mm -hmm. them out. Am I helping good? You are helping good, thank you. Who do you think I'm going to get the prize? <laughs> Me. I hope I get something. Mama needs a prize. So some of these plants... Hey, Ty Ty. Hi. So some of these plants pull out of there pretty easily, like that guy there, but some of them haven't. Then we kind of have to fish them out with my knife. So I've just been kind of fishing them out and uh, putting them where they need to go there. Some of this stuff we space further than others. I'll kind of 
give you an idea of what we got here. So we got the capture green cabbage here. And on the cabbage, I wanted to uh, oh, wait on that tractor there. It's that time of year, they're all over the roads. On the cabbage, I wanted to space them out a little further than normal, so a little more than 12 inches. So we went closer to 18 inches just to give them a little extra room. So we got the capture green cabbage there. We got our red cabbage here, more cabbage here. So three rows of kind of standard cabbage. Chinese cabbage here, we put it a little closer. It kind of heads up like romaine, doesn't need as much space. This late afternoon light's got looking yellow, but it's not that yellow. Then we've got rutabagas here. We put those pretty close together, about eight inches or so. And then we went back to spacing things apart a foot or a little more. So we got broccoli and cauliflower on that row. And then we did uh, two rows of Brussels sprouts right there. Still got one row left here. Don't know what I'll throw in there, but uh, we'll find some. Okay. Okay, on our first three rows, uh, we're, we planted some cabbage. And on our next three rows, we planted some through the bag and then we can plant it what they call broccoli and then we plant some broccoli and what else cauliflower and then cauliflower and then brussels sprouts and then brussels sprouts that's right and honey are you tired sprouts. i'm worn out with and worn then out and dirty and then ice cream and then okra no okra buddy that compost there will get you dirty. And it's gonna take me like an hour to get it off in the shower. It doesn't like just wash yeah. off. Yeah, now the bathtub's gonna be stained. Filthy, yeah. So I'm glad we didn't do drip irrigation on that because we would have never got it all planted in time. <laughs> and it was kind of nice forever. just working as a team, me dropping plants out there, fishing them out of the trees, <coughs> and them getting them planted. I would um, beg to differ. I would have rather had that job you had. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> The one where you stand up and just push and drop plants. Yeah. The, instead the, of the It takes a little more precision. Knees. I had to do <laughs> it. Had, that, that required some decision making. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Everything. But y'all did a great job planting them in the ground there. <laughs> I only did about two rows and they did all the rest. <laughs> we got some mischievous boogers back here behind us. Anyway, good to get that whole plot, or at least almost all that plot finished there. Lots of good groceries there. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, These are my favorite kind of garden goodies. I'm going to have to start another round of cauliflower and broccoli because we didn't get that many plants in yes. the ground. They kind of died. I know the broccoli is your favorite. And cauliflower. I think the I cabbage is probably my favorite. I love the cabbage. It's so versatile, but I do get sick of it. And the, the Brussels sprouts, when they... Oh, when they make. If they make. I know. So when, we planted a ton of that hoping we might get four plants out of 30. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Maybe uh, maybe it'll work this year. So we're going to feed all this stuff really well because all this stuff is, is pretty heavy feeders, especially early on. If you don't get them the nutrients early on, then they end up being stunted at some point. So we're going to feed them heavily early. Hopefully we can make some nice big heads of cabbage. I mean, I'm going for seven, eight pounds heads of cabbage here. You need to talk about your schedule of how you're going to feed them. I think people always have a lot of questions. I don't know what that means when you say that, and I think other people probably wonder too. So we're going to, uh, hold on, Tata. -ta. So we're going to, we got the uh, fertilizer in the furrow. We got right. that. And okay. then Check. I'm going to overhead water these right now. And then probably. For how many days? I'm just going to, well, I'm going to overhead water them tonight. Okay. And then probably either tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to run some of the AgriThrive through the overhead sprinkler. Okay. And go ahead and start fertilizing them. And I'm probably going to feed them at maybe once a week. Okay. One, at least once every two weeks. We'll For see how, how they look uh, until they're until they're really done. Oh, So okay. we're just going to, uh, we'll do what we call spoon feed them. So I'm just going to inject some stuff through that overhead, uh, through the injector, through the overhead tripod sprinkler, about... Once every two weeks, once every week. Just depend on how green and healthy they look. If they start looking real green and healthy, we might back off. Back off some. But, but at uh, least once every two weeks. Yeah, at least initially till they get up and going strong. Does that help? <laughs> yeah, I think that helps. I mean, I think a lot of people are always like, what are you doing? What do you mean you're yeah. feeding them? What are you feeding them? These brassicas like this. I need to tell you something, guys. Guys, after I am feeding channel, my channel, this channel, we cook it. We plan it. Okay, okay. These boys are hustling these non-existent channels. Oh, like yeah. Nobody's business. Yeah. I think you got a few more Marketing years. Marketing directors back here. Tata, you got a few more years for they'll legally allow you to have a channel. <laughs> so what I was saying with these brassicas, 
I mean, every crop in the garden, you can kind of look at it and if it's, if, tell if it's pitiful or not. But with this stuff, the cabbage, the broccoli, rutabagas, all that, you can look at them and you can say, you know, you can easily tell. You can hey, easily tell. These need some fertilizer or, okay. or these don't. So okay. you want them to look nice, big, and healthy, and uh, they, they can take a good bit of nutrients. So okay. that's what we're going to do. We'll have to spray, make sure the worms don't get them. That, um, that Chinese cabbage, it gets tore up pretty yeah. easily, um, yeah. so we'll have to keep an eye on that. But we'll make sure to, uh, you know, show you guys all that okay. as we uh, blah, blah. grow all this stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, head on over to our website, lazydogfarm.com. <laughs> Got some good recipes there, garden blogs, where we list all the different varieties we're planting. More in-depth than yeah. you do on here. More in-depth. Got some recommended products yeah. and we got some cool Lazy Dog Farm oh, merch you check can buy out that there. Merch. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farms. Oh, well. mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.